audiovisual team to play it. Thank you. Thank you for the opportunity to join you today. We are standing on the edge of an extraordinary precipice, one that will define our survival. Climate change is profoundly impacting every aspect of our lives, livelihoods, and well-being. However, despite decades of discussion, we've only recently started to move beyond debate into action, but our actions are not fast or bold enough. At our current pace, we are heading towards an unsustainable global temperature rise of 2.4 to 2.6 Celsius by the century's end. To meet the Paris Agreement goal of 1.5 degrees, we must not only slow our pace, but actually drastically reduce greenhouse gas emissions in the next eight years. The world is warming at a record breaking level and extreme weather events are daily occurrences, endangering lives and futures. We are experiencing right now how climate change is threatening us daily, including our health. The climate crisis is a health crisis. And recent history has taught us this danger on a global scale. The COVID-19 pandemic has underscored the vital importance of safeguarding health. It demonstrated that health is intrinsic to economic growth, security, and the strength of our communities. The pandemic reversed years of progress in global health, disrupting over 90% of health services worldwide, leading to increased deaths from preventable causes, trillions in GDP losses, and a surge in poverty. We cannot afford to repeat this history with climate change's health impacts. Did you know that one in four deaths is already attributable to preventable environmental causes? Further, the World Health Organization predicts an additional 250,000 deaths per year due to climate change. Rising temperatures, extreme weather events, air pollution, and compromised water, land, and food security contribute to a range of health issues, including infectious diseases, heat-related illnesses, non-communicable diseases, and adverse pregnancy outcomes. Despite the overwhelming evidence, health is rarely part of the climate change conversations, with only 0.5% of climate change funding allocated to health initiatives. It is not included in the most central climate discussions like the global stock take or the covered letter. And until this year, has not been highlighted at the annual conference of the parties, COP. But I wanna tell you that this challenge also presents a tremendous opportunity. A health-centered response to climate change, coupled with strategic investments, can have far-reaching effects across multiple sectors. Investments in reducing air pollution, which claims more lives annually than the entire COVID-19 pandemic, will prevent a future loss of almost 50 trillion that we've spent since 2010 to address its consequences. Embracing green energy for healthcare will reduce carbon emissions and ensure access to medical services for the most vulnerable populations. Moreover, investing in robust and responsive health systems, along with the health workforce, will create jobs and promote gender equity as approximately 70% of the health workforce comprises women. This approach will allow us to tackle both the impending surge of climate-related diseases and the existing epidemics of HIV, TB, malaria, maternal mortality, and non-communicable disease that we see today. But perhaps most critically, we must shift health investment from costs to one of investments and savings. Studies show are invested in health, turn of investment of two to four dollars. Investing in health systems now, we can respond effectively to climate change while addressing equity, and collective security. As we approach coffee for prioritizing health in the climate change debate, 
engaging political leaders and local communities alike. I urge you to join me in this endeavor. Thank you for your attention. We extend our deepest gratitude to Dr. Vanessa Carey for this special address uh, on the occasion of Social Business Day 2023. Ladies and gentlemen, we now move on to our next plenary, which is mobilizing sports and social business in the new economic landscape, addressing challenges and unlocking entrepreneurial potential. Our upcoming session intends to blend the realms of social business and sports recognizing their collective potential as potent drivers for positive change within the evolving economic landscape. We aim to shed light and challenges in the sports sector and explore innovative strategies. Before we delve into the session, and I invite the moderator, we'd we have a very special screening of a video from Philip muller with the Chief of Selection of Sports at UNESCO. We begin the session through this special recorded address. If I could request the audiovisual team to play it. Thank you. Hello everyone. My name is Philipp Müller-Wirth and I'm the chief of the sports section at the United Nations Educational, Scientific and Cultural Organization, UNESCO. I'm very happy to be joining you on this year's Social Business Day. We are very grateful for the invitation to celebrate this day and discuss the importance of sport and social business as tools to address the challenges of today and drive sustainable development. As the United Nations lead for sport, UNESCO defends the practice of physical education, physical activity and sport as fundamental right for all, as embedded in our international charter. Sport has the power to improve physical and mental well-being, support educational outcomes and improve socio-economic issues such as gender inequality, unemployment and health, both physical and mental. Evidence shows that every $1 invested in grassroots sport can generate up to $124 in return value. 80% of young women in Europe equate participation in sport with an increase in confidence and decrease in anxiety. Additionally, participation in daily physical activity can lead to a 30% decrease in depression and a 40% increase in academic test scores. This is why it is crucial to increase investment in sport. We need to work together to ensure more people, particularly our youth, are engaging in physical activity and reaping its benefits. And this is what we are working to achieve at UNESCO through the Fit for Life Alliance. UNESCO's Fit for Life Alliance seeks to increase participation in sport, enhance life uh, well-being of participants and system uh, system change investments. It is a global framework for collective action with concrete programs for change, focusing on advancing gender equality, youth empowerment, the sustainability of mega sport events, and scaling up investments. In order to achieve this, we are working with a diverse coalition of partners, including UNUS Sports Hub. When the power of sport is combined with social business, the potential is immense. Social businesses are crucial to drive innovative, impact-oriented social outcomes. This is why in June, UNESCO signed a letter of intent with UNESCO Sports Hub to work together on the scaling of the use of social business in combination with sport to enhance sustainable development. Together, we will work around four key areas of collaboration. The first one is Fit for Life's Youth Accelerator Programme. This program will support and upskill youth participants via masterclasses, social business training, and work placements. We want to give young people the tools they need to make the change they want to see in their communities using sport as the catalyst. The second one is the Fit for Life label for inclusive and sustainable sports events. We will work together to support hosts and organizing committees to develop, harmonize, and cross-promote legacy plans that boost social and environmental sustainability using social business principles. The third area of collaboration is around transforming cities through sport. Economically sustainable community sport facilities 
will be created in disadvantaged urban areas, providing economic opportunities for members of different communities, particularly young people and women. Finally, we will also work on sport and social business events. Both the Union Sports Hub and UNESCO will identify opportunities to promote and jointly organize Fit for Life and social business related major events. I invite all of you today to grasp the full potential of sport and join the Fit for Life Alliance to advance the sustainable development goals. The social business ecosystem plays a critical role in achieving our common goals, and it is only by working together that we will be able to do so. The UNO Sports Up is our privileged partner in this field. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, can we have a huge round of applause? I believe this is a true testament of how these multilateral organizations are in, in absolutely their sphere of influence adopting the social business model. Uh, not to keep you waiting any further, to guide us through this uh, sports discussion and the sports panel, we are pleased to introduce our session moderator, Yuan Neuer, who is the co-founder of UNO Sports Hub. Uh, Yuan is a former semi-professional rugby player from France, who's also served as a former procurement manager for the Rio 2016 Summer Olympic Games and the Paralympic Games as well. He's been an ardent advocate for using international sporting events to solve social issues in a sustainable way. And that is what led him to form the UNO, social business, uh, UNO Sports Hub, a platform dedicated to solving social issues in sports. Yuan, you're an absolute legend, over to you. Thank you, Promi. Thank you, everybody. You had a nice lunch, some fruit, some uh, water to get hydrated and energized for the sports session. Um, thank you so much, first, to UNO Center, because we are in this great venue. I must say that I like the idea of Social Business Day in beach resorts. I, I don't know wh whose idea it was, but like, it was, yeah, I, I'm looking forward to next year in Cancun and uh, in uh, <laughs> Ibiza, maybe. Let's, let's uh, you know, sky is the limit. Uh, for those who do not know me, uh, me uh, I'm Yuan Nogue. I'm the co-founder and managing director of Unosports Hub. Uh, uh, Unosports Hub, what we do is we simply develop, uh, uh, promote, and implement the view of Professor Mohamed Yunus within the sport industry. The smaller brother, you know, so, you know, we're on our side, we do our sport. Uh, sometimes people don't really understand what we do. Uh, you know, like sports, social business, it's really a thing. Uh, but we come on the yearly basis at Social Business Day and we show our tricks, we show our, uh, you know, uh, backflip and uh, weightlifting and then, oh, okay, it makes actually sense. Sport and social business, this is a thing. Uh, we are five years old. We presented UNO Sports Hub that was back in Bangalore in 2018 at Social Business Day. And I'm really happy to report that after five years, we are now running social business program in more than 40 countries with the support of a team, uh, extended team of uh, employees and, uh, and experts of more than 90 people. Um, and these people help us to uh, train more than 3,500 people, individuals from the, the sport industry on a yearly basis. We provide support to more than 500 projects on a yearly basis, and we accelerate more than 100 social business in sport on a yearly basis. Uh, so this is the path and the pace in which we are going right now. Um, and of course, uh, when talking about this path and this pace, uh, it is very important to mention the International Olympic Committee, which has been our uh, very early partner and, and a very, uh, very great friend since then. Uh, they have been extremely supportive to the social business uh, concept and I've taken it very seriously. So it was very important for us to open this session with an address from Sam Young. He's the vice president of the International Olympic Committee. He's a former sailor too. He's a, he's a very successful entrepreneur in Singapore uh, and a former diplomat. Uh, and but as I said, more important is of the International Olympic, Com Olympic Committee. And it's going to now about what is the role of sport within the economic ecosystem. So thank you so much, uh, Sam Yang, for being with us today. The floor is yours. Thank, thank you, Joan. Uh, Professor Yunus, friends, ladies and gentlemen, it is a great pleasure and a privilege to join you today on this beautiful island of Langkawi. 
All of us must be really thankful to have finally emerged from the dark tunnel of the global pandemic. And while the very worst of the pandemic is hopefully behind us now, the world is still facing a daunting road ahead. Wars and conflict, mistrust and confrontation, economic slowdown, inequality and injustice, climate change, the list of global and truly existential crises goes on. And it's really an urgent call for action. Today, all of us must prepare for this post-pandemic world of simultaneous crisis. Together with all of you, the social business community, the International Olympic Committee is ready to shape this future with our shared Olympic values. As an organization dedicated to making the world a better place and more peaceful place through sport, the role of the Olympic community is very clear. In these very difficult times, we need our Olympic mission to promote peace and solidarity even more. Oops, I think my things got jammed a bit. Sports brings people together in peaceful competition like a few other things. Sports has the power to foster peace and understanding with our fellow human beings. Since ancient times, the purpose of Olympic Games has always been to promote peace through sport. At the Olympic Games, the athletes set aside the differences that divide our world. They compete fiercely against each other while living peacefully together under one roof in the Olympic Village. This makes the Olympic Games such a powerful symbol of peace. But peace is about much more than setting aside differences. It is about creating a better world where everyone can flourish, where people are treated equally and with dignity. This is where sport can make a positive impact. Sport is the low-cost, high-impact tool to support all countries, big or small, rich or poor, to build together a more peaceful, healthier, more equal and more sustainable world for everyone, 365 days a year. This is why the IOC and the entire Olympic movement are focused on strengthening this very important and liberal role of sport and contribute to the UN's Sustainable Development Goals. Because this is what our mission is all about, putting sport at the service of peaceful development of humankind. Making the world a better place for everyone, we share this mission with you, the social business community. Improving lives, empowering people to be the best that they can be, strengthening solidarity, building peace. All these values of sport are also the core of social business, the concept pioneered by our dear friend, Professor Mohammed Yunus. In everything that Professor Yunus has done, he has always challenged conventional thinking, always pushing for more inclusion, for more social progress, for more solidarity. Never has this been more urgent than today. Our shared values. This is the inter interaction of social business world and the world of sport. We share the same goal, to make the world a better, a more peaceful place. And like social business, sport is inclusive. It brings out the best in us, and it benefits people directly. And this also explains why we have joined hands with Professor Yunus to bring the transformational power of social business and that of sport together. We have collaborated with the Yunus Sports Hub, the IOC Young Leaders Program, the 
Athlete 365 Business Accelerator, the first ever social business entrepreneurship program for Olympic athletes by bringing the world of social business and sport together. We have a strong foundation to accelerate our efforts towards our shared goal, making the world a better place for all. We know that we can make progress in partnership by joining hands. Just as the athletes show us, we can only go faster, aim higher, become stronger if we stand together in solidarity. Our partnership with the social business community is the perfect illustration of this. Our new Olympic motto, faster, higher, stronger, together. The Social Business Day is a timely opportunity to demonstrate that social business and sport are a winning team. So let us join hands to build a more human-centered, more inclusive, more peaceful, more equal, and more sustainable world together. Because the time to act is now. Thank you very much. Thank you so much, Samyang. I invite you to, we will still need you during this panel discussion. Um, I mentioned that we are extremely proud to work with the International Olympic Committee, of course, and with uh, a couple of other prestigious organizations in the sport industry. You know, when Paris 2024 is one of them. Uh, uh, the UNESCO is another one. The French Development Agency is another one. But I think what makes us even more proud, uh, even prouder, rather, is the fact that we do it repeatedly. You know, once may be luck, but twice start becoming a pattern. And that's exactly what we're trying to do. We're trying to bring social business to a pattern to, to be mainstream into the sport industry. And I would really like room, in particular the Grameen family for that, because the reason why we are able to, 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 to go towards this path is because we are able to inspire people in the sport industry with your stories. And without your story and your inspiration, it would not be possible. So a big, big round of applause to yourselves. I would like now to call all the panelists of the sports session and another round of applause for them, please, while they come here. I'm calling... Sorry, yes, indeed. So I'm calling on stage... Kim Dong-Uk from Yunus Korea, Jovina Shu, which was the, uh, the World Olympian Association Development Manager for Asia, Tasmina Rahman, the Managing Director of Grameen Trust, and Rasela Maud Kal 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 Khalid, a Malaysian Olympian Association President. Thank you so much. All right, and we're going to start this sports session, which, by the way, this, this, uh, this year will be a bit more about athlete and social business. We're going to do a deep dive into the topic of athlete and social business uh, with a specific focus on the Asian and Malaysia region, and we have uh, the perfect uh, setup uh, with our speakers for that. Um, I will actually kick off with you, Sam Yang, because you're already, uh, you're already uh, warmed up. <laughs> uh, so Sam Yang, as the, uh, the uh, vice president of the International Olympic Committee, as an entrepreneur yourself, too, as, and, and, and as a former athlete, what uh, would you say is the role of big organizations like the International Olympic Committee to support these uh, dynamics of athlete entrepreneurship and athlete social business? Uh, thank, thank, thank you very much. Yes, I'm indeed very warm up in this very warm weather <laughs> and the warm hospitality as well. The, the IOC's role is really to promote sports and support athletes and we're doing it 365 days a year. And we know that uh, taking part in competition, representing the countries, pursue your own dreams in sports is not the, the end all of everything. And once the sporting career is over, there will be uh, these other careers to pursue. 
And this is the part where we believe that uh, as an organization, we have to support our athletes in every way that we can. I mentioned earlier on about the, the, the Olympic 365 and uh, the accelerator program. And this is one example, and I, I believe uh, Joina will be able to elaborate a bit more later. Uh, but, but this is a case where uh, social business and sports can come together to support uh, the, the young athletes' dream and, and their passion. And through this collaboration, it uh, allows the athletes to think of what is important to them and through the, uh, already the established pathway, to find a way to develop a, a social business uh, that would fit their, their growth, fit uh, into their future without uh, creating this very daunting uh, thought about, oh, I'm starting a business, how do I do it? How, uh, I, what sort of guidance do you need? But so with the, you know, Sports, sports Hub, this is something that, that we were able to do and uh, Professor you know, uh, you, yourself, you have helped millions around the world uh, already in pursuing this dream. So this is the one of uh, the way where I think uh, we can support and then what uh, we've been uh, working together. Thank you. Thank you, Samyang. Uh, now we're going to move on the very specific um, uh, case of Malaysia, and I would like to uh, to ask to uh, to you, uh, Nurasela uh, Maud Khalid, uh, you are the, the president of the Olympian uh, uh, um, Malaysian Olympian Association, and uh, could you t give us examples? So first of all, can you introduce what is uh, your association, and can you tell us what are examples of athletes taking this lead in social business entrepreneurship? Thank you, Yuan. Um, thank you very much. Uh, in such a short notice, I was invited for this forum and I am, to be honest, a bit nervous. Uh, but of course, I'm thrilled because I'm here with all these distinguished guests, leaders of the world. Thank you very much for having me today. And um, of course, um, I'm sure most of you are not really aware of the Malaysian Olympians. Uh, we participated in the Olympic Games since 1956, which was in Melbourne, Australia. And uh, the first time also we participated at the Winter Olympic Games in Pyeongchang, Korea. Yeah. So in a total of 354 Olympians, we have today in total. Yeah. Um, I believe we can grow that number definitely uh, in the future. But to talk about the initiative and so on, I, I think, first of all, whatever that we are, we are doing in life, the mindset is important. Definitely mindset is important. And a strategic planning and also a system in place that actually works for all. And I was touched by the energy and also passion by one of the participants yesterday, Sophia. I, I think your work is great and it can be implicated to all the rest of the organizations. And um, again, uh, sport actually a great tool that actually bring peace and togetherness in, uh, in a lot of people, as uh, mentioned by Mr. Ang earlier. And uh, it actually a great way of living as well. It actually promote better life, health, in, and also physically and mentally. And of course, we want to have more Olympian that actually represented Malaysia at that international stage. And uh, to me, the great example that we already have that actually use this uh, social business in sport, uh, we already have few. And uh, one of them, who is the pioneer, uh, actually used Muay Thai as, as a sport that actually promote the young one that actually faces difficulty in life and they promote sports, Muay Thai, and also life skill to actually help these people to become a better individual and they can actually lead their life better. So I like to call upon Imran and Azri to stand up. We sh they, they, they actually deserve to get that applause, yeah, for all their effort. And to be honest, they were looking forward to actually meet Thomas Bar, but unfortunately, Thomas is not here, yeah. But really, I think uh, we should replicate whatever 
um, uh, business uh, model that is already exists so that you don't actually scratch your head and um, start from the bottom. Yeah, this is the right way that I, I feel is best to be practiced. Yeah, thank you. Thank you, Naracela. And uh, following up on that, uh, you were explaining one, <coughs> one of, <coughs> one of the uh, social business that you know here in Malaysia and that, that, that is very successful. More generally, what is the perception of people in Malaysia around sport for development? Okay, just to talk about a little bit more of the background in Malaysia, we have a lot of organization and also uh, sport stakeholders in Malaysia, uh, which is governmental and also non-governmental. And uh, of course, we are trying our best to uh, develop sport in the right way. And, um, and of course, um, to uplift uh, sport, uh, we, we are hoping not only to focus I, I personally, yeah, I, I hope we can shift that mindset not only to focus on the medal tally and gold medal, but more on the, especially to promote sport for all, inclusivity. Um, and this is very close to my heart uh, because we are currently doing one of the program, uh, uh, which is, of course, from the Malaysia Olympian Association and Ol Malaysian Olympism in Action Society. Uh, we initiated this um, run event as, as it promotes inclusivity and togetherness. Yeah. Uh, we can look around here today. We are all from different backgrounds and we are all from different continental. Um, and again, uh, whichever program and activities we are doing, we are here to learn, grow, and to become a better human being. Uh, that is very essential to me and the same to all of you. I, I feel that. And um, of course, uh, to transfer this kind of program and others into social business, I think it's really relevant and best solution to apply, especially uh, for the non-governmental organization, non organization to, to replicate whatever program and activity that they are currently having to a business uh, social, so that they can actually uh, sustain and uh, 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 get profit, they can sustain them for a long term, uh, which I think I'm also trying to figure out the best way to make sure uh, the Malaysia Olympian Association can sustain ourselves. We can't just uh, rely on the government grants and uh, funding. So I feel uh, social business is one of the best way that we can actually uh, implement. Yeah. Thank you so much, Marcella. Thank you so much. Uh, and that brings me uh, maybe uh, to have a, a stronger and, and wider focus on Asia. Uh, with Jovina Shu, who is the development manager for the World Olympian Association for Asia. Uh, Jovina, thank you so much for being with us today. Um, I had one question, which is about, uh, I mean, empowering Olympian is what you do on a daily basis. But what do you do and why is it important that you do it uh, to make the, the, the Olympian drive not only, you know, uh, 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 performance when it comes to, to, to their sport, but also to change in the society. Thank you. Um, so maybe just are still listening. Anybody wants to hazard a guess, how many living Olympians are there in the world globally? Just shout it out. What's, what's your guess? How many living Olympians are there in the world? 5,000? Higher? 100,000. Yeah, you got it. <laughs> so we have about 100,000 living Olympians. Um, and we are, our population is what, 7.8 billion, 7.9 billion? Um, so it's 0.0001% of the... So it's, it's not a small number, but it's also not that massive a number. Um, so just a bit of a background, what I do for Olympians. So as, as you want to say, my role is to empower Olympians so that they can contribute back to their communities, they can empower other Olympians to make the world a better place. Um, so as a background, that is what um, World Olympians Association does. Um, and yeah, so, so just also to clarify who Olympians are, they are athletes who have competed 
the three zeros. I'm sure you guys will know this. What are three zeros? Come on. Yeah, zero poverty, zero unemployment, and zero net carbon emissions. And it's also a bit of an unfortunate truth that we all do have Olympians who are living in poverty. We have Olympians who are unemployed. We have Olympians who are refugees. Um, we know the situation in Ukraine. We know the situation in Afghanistan. So part of what our role is is also how can we support these Olympians. Um, yeah, so I mean, on the other side, the, the positive side of things is I, I was actually outside and I picked up this brochure from one of the booths, which is the address from Professor Yunus at the IOC meeting at the Rio Olympics. So I'm going to quote and paraphrase a little bit of what he has said. Um, so Olympians are celebrities. They are role models. They inspire the youth. They, they inspire the next generation. Um, they are also global heroes and national heroes. So to answer the question of why we should help empower these Olympians is because they have all this potential. And if you can give this group of people, you can give the Olympians the education, the skills, the tools, the resources. So I believe we can really empower them to make the world a better place. Thank you. Uh, and the follow-up question on that, because you were one of the, in, uh, you had integrated the at least 65 business accelerator, so you had been uh, 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 through this uh, acceleration program. What was uh, interesting to you, and what is attractive to you when it comes to the social business concept? Yeah, I, I think one of the key points in in the social business is about having sustainable change, and you can only have sustainable change if there's a sustainable project. Um, so I think what, one of the points in the business scenario, which is essentially how do you, what is a social business and how do you develop and run a social business. Um, so where I work with is a lot with the National Olympians Association. So another question for the crowd to guess. How many na National Olympians Associations do you know? Just a bit more than 100? 120? No? Okay, I'll, I'll give you the answer. No, we can keep going. It's, about, it's 108 National Olympians Associations that are members of the World Olympians Association. So I think where it is, is if, if we can empower these 108 National Olympians Associations, and they are global, so you might have one in your country. Um, and so I think the way forward as well is for sustainable change and for sustainable projects. I think, part, to me, partnerships are key. Um, and so I, I will also encourage you to really look at the Olympian Association in your area. If you know of Olympians and how you can empower them, then that's, yeah, that's a way forward. Thank you. Thank you so much. Um, and when we talk about athletes, when we talk about Olympian, we, of course, talk about Olympic infrastructure. Um, Professor Yunus was back in 2018 at the opening ceremony of, uh, of 2018 Olympics. Since then, uh, you know, the city of Pyeongchang has continued to live on and to, uh, to be a, a tourism city. Uh, and I would like to, uh, uh, to ask you, Kim dong uh, you are the head of UNUS Korea. And this, this is a bit of a spoiler because we're going to explain what is UNUS Korea afterwards. But can you explain us now what is, ex what is happening in, in Pyeongchang? Thank you, Yuan. So, as you know, Pyeongchang is the whole city of the 2018 Winter Olympics. However, before the Olympic, Pyeongchang was known as a good city to enjoy winter sports due to its climate. And after the Olympics, its brand remained recognized as a good city to enjoy winter sports without any changes. Due to this perception and brand, uh, the tourism infrastructure created during the Pyeongchang Olympic is being utilized uh, to some extent, but more than half of the year is off peak, and many of the glorious carriages not being used. such like a crisis is also an opportunity. In other words, Pyeongchang is a city with high reputation and infrastructure, and it is over to enjoy winter sports. Therefore, of the Olympic view and the identity of the sports city expanded, it is expected to create a new opportunity for urban regeneration. 
And so, of course, when, when uh, you have this opportunity that is presented to you and, and to work on, on this, uh, this concept of, uh, of a self-sustainable self uh, you know, infrastructure in, in Pyeongchang, it gives, it gives us also the, the opportunity to work on the development of social business more generally. That's a bit the idea of, of UNOS Korea, right? Can you explain what uh, UNOS Korea is all about? Yes. Uh, so UNOS Korea aims to contribute to the creation of a World 3.0. It is planned to promote and implement exclusively in South Korea the concept of social business developed by Professor Yunus, and in particular in the sports sector, and supports the mission of its global resource century, the Yunus Century. In particular, we will support youth, local entrepreneurs, and athletes by providing them with social business education, training, opportunities for employment, and other actions. Also, promote social business and leverage the Olympic legacy in Pyeongchang to the benefit of those who need it most through key partnership, education, training, events, and other actions. Creation of key partnership with businesses, NGOs, foundations, and public entities that want to contribute to the purpose of UNOS Korea. And lastly, advocating, advocating for private, non-profit, academic, and public actors involved with in activities directly or indirectly related to the purpose. To achieve it, the UNUS Korea is planning to carry out, first, supporting social business, business that says sports experience provided by unemployment athlete in Olympic venue, which provide a revenue to unemployment athlete while maximizing use of former Olympic infrastructure. Second, providing unemployment use with the opportunity to reopen close pension to make them entrepreneurs while supporting the increase of the sport tourism in the city. Lastly, social business engagement program that aim to, I'm sorry, that aim at encouraging young individuals and athletes in the region of Pyeongchang to get involved in social business, startup, and other local in industries. We do our best to make it real and very excited to show you Yunus Korea soon. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much, Kim. And hopefully you will be here next year to explain us like the, the, the first year of operation of UNOS Korea and all the, all the, the great things it has uh, achieved. And we now go to our last panelist, Tasmina Rahman. You're the, the managing director of Gramin Trust. You are the social business expert here uh, on this panel. Uh, and uh, you witness also these uh, dynamics of, uh, of sport entrepreneurship, sport social business entrepreneurship, and athlete social business entrepreneurship. Uh, to you, when you, when you hear Jovina, uh, when, when you hear uh, uh, Nura Silatu uh, speaking and, uh, about their uh, entrepreneurship ex experience, would you give any advice on what it takes to be a good social business entrepreneur? Yes, thank you, Mr. Wan. Working? Yeah, uh, before going to answer your question, I want to share few words about Grameen Trust. Sure. Yeah, Grameen Trust, uh, under the leadership of Nobel laureate Professor Mahmoud Yunus, Grameen Trust uh, works with two zero goals of, uh, two zero goals. One is uh, zero wealth, uh, uh, zero wealth concentration and zero wealth, uh, zero unemployment. And Grameen Trust replicates uh, to achieve zero, uh, zero or zero wealth concentration. Grameen Trust replicates uh, microcredit program in 43 countries through 154 organization. And these organization uh, reached 127 million poor families. And uh, to achieve uh, zero, uh, zero unemployment, we implement a new entrepreneur program. And uh, uh, we and uh, three Grameen companies actually implement a uh, new entrepreneur program. And Grameen Trust itself uh, developed 25,000 new entrepreneurs who, who created uh, in their self-employment, they created uh, 20,000 additional jobs for unemployed young. So I'm going to your qu uh, question. Uh, so uh, according to, uh, as Nobel laureate Professor Mahmoud Yunus says, that every human being is born with entrepreneur skills. So our responsibility is to unleash their potential. And um, uh, for uh, any individual or athletes, I think they should must have dream and clear vision. They should have will force, eagerness, 
and confidence in developing and founding a business. And um, for successful uh, business leader, uh, they should comply with all legal requirements and um, and uh, uh, setting up in setting up a business. And uh, they should maintain proper accounting and monitor the business. And uh, they should start with a small and uh, gradually they uh, expand their business gradually uh, gradually they, they should they should ensure gradual development thank you thank you thank you and and when he, when it comes to uh, because of course the Grameen model it focuses on women uh, uh, what pieces of advice specifically for women would you give uh, in this entrepreneurship journey uh, first important thing is yeah, that the sports women should have uh, imagination dream strong determination and confidence are essential. They should have belief in ideas, expertise and abilities. That these are also very important. My advice in this regard, uh, they, you should always strive uh, for new initiatives and challenges. Focus on your mission, keeping your vision in mind and be honest to your principles and ambitions and uh, start a business as per your dream and ability, comply with the uh, legal uh, requirements, and maintain the proper accounting. And sportswoman, I think sportswoman may start business, uh, uh, any business as she comfortable with. She can start business on uh, sports accessories, or she can uh, set up, um, set up uh, uh, training centers, Center or fitness center or gym in, through which she can create jobs for others also. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. Big round of applause to our panelists. As, uh, as we've mentioned, the idea really is to make this uh, sport and social business concept as high as possible on the agenda and as high as, as uh, uh, mainstream as possible within the Sport industry and with people like this we will uh, we will for sure uh, succeed in doing so so thank you very much for your attention and uh, see you next year up to you are we yeah well, okay so we, we still got time okay perfect oh, look at that <laughs> so is there any question from the assembly I'm, I'm gonna you you take you do it okay Any questions? I'm happy to pass the mic around. Yes, any question from the assembly, please raise your hands. Any questions? I'm very happy to pass them. Yep, there oh, we go. Here, right. If you wouldn't mind, Suresh, coming up. Hi, I'm Suresh. Um, I, want to, yeah, I want to know from any of the panelists or yourself that in case um, if anybody in any country wants to learn on how to create social businesses for the sports people, is there any formula or is there any uh, prescription for them? I, I can start and I can start this one. Um, so practically, when you look into what is a social business in sports, it's just a social business. So from the moment that you know how to start a social business, then you know how to start a social business in sport. It, it is just, sport is just the playground that we use. And it's actually a pretty fertile play, playground for, for sport because it has a lot of common values. Then if you want to specifically bring, uh, uh, let's say, programs that are supporting you to, uh, to start your social business, you have the International Olympic Committee have the At Least 365 Business Accelerator, uh, and, and many other sport organizations have, have many different ways of supporting. And may, maybe, uh, uh, Jovina, you have uh, uh, some, uh, some idea from, from the World Olympian Association? Um, so not specifically, but it's also if you want, like I mentioned earlier, if you want to reach out to the Olympians in your country, um, um, there is, um, in, there's 108, so maybe not, um, but you can also reach out to the National Olympians Association. I think we actually had slides, I don't know if they... Yeah, so I actually, just one simple slide to show you our website, and we have a directory um, when, oh, when you get it can up. You, you can give, what is the website? Uh, it's just olympians.org, and then just go to... And then, oh, 
back? Yeah. All right. Um, yeah, so the website is olympians.org. Um, and then there's an NOA tab, and then there's a word directory. So, yeah, and also, I, I don't know if it's, but that's also the, the one. Um, yeah, and you also can contact <laughs> us. Yeah, can you roll the slide forward, please? No, the, it's the other one. It's the other one? Yeah. I'm just bringing that up for you. I said. <laughs> or maybe actually while we're here, yeah. can we can we have Nurasela explain what is this slide? <laughs> yes, yes, absolutely, <laughs> please. <laughs> I was like, yay, finally they show this slide. <laughs> well, this was the program that I was uh, speaking earlier. It's the run that is so uh, so much um, influence to me, especially uh, as run with Olympian, run for Olympism. Uh, we are. This is the second time that we are actually uh, organizing this event and, and I like to promote this uh, run I just like and this Next this slide, is please. really um, a good way for companies and also organization to take part because it's a team effort of five to fifteen a team to complete a kilometer of 129 129 is because why? Uh, I think Joina will know uh, why is it 129 it's because of the form of the IOC. Yeah, it's the 129th year. Yes, so uh, we want to educate people and also uh, to really make them aware of sport. It's not just about running, competing, and winning medal, but also other aspects in in sport. Yeah. Yeah, sorry. So this was the one I was talking about. <laughs> so that's our website, olympians.org, and you can contact us at info at the wa.org. So if you want to find your Olympians Association. Perfect. I believe we've got one more question. I'll just bring the mic over to Lamia. Uh, you know, Professor Yunus visited uh, FC Barcelona and Camp Nou, and... Uh, there was a pictures with Messi and in Camp Nou that almost broke the internet in Bangladesh. And where he was there, he mentioned about the transformation power of sports. I wanted to ask you that since soccer is one of the most powerful uh, and most um, popular sports in the world, do you have any tie-ups coming up with soccer and social business? Yes, actually we have, a, uh, we are hopefully, if we get the confirmation of Professor News, we're going to be uh, at the World Football Summit meeting uh, uh, the, uh, uh, the new Secretary General of the FIFA. So, so, so that, that uh, let's say, not, not going to do any spoiler here, but, but it, it may, we, we, we may come, uh, come up with football in, uh, quite soon. Wonderful. Uh, any more questions from the audience? I'm sure everyone has, is intrigued quite a bit. This is an absolutely incredible sphere. That's fine. All right. So again, a wonderful panel. Thank you very much all for doing this. We'd request you to please come up and then our photo opportunity with Professor Yunus as well. Once again, a round round of applause, wonderful sports panel. Requesting all the panelists to please step a bit forward for the photograph. Thank you very much. Once again, round of applause. Can we have a round round of applause for this panel, please? brings now is time for possibly one of my most favorite parts of this conference which has been this was a bit of a surprise we didn't an extremely special <laughs> we've just uh, finished a very deep dive exploration of sports and social business and the next segment beautifully embodies the spirit of sports youth and dedication perfectly capturing the theme we've just reflected on in this plenary 
We're about to witness a traditional Taekwondo performance by a young man who's been practicing the Korean martial art with dedication and commitment. It's none other than Cyrus Yunus McReynolds. Cyrus has very graciously and very bravely offered to share his skills with us today in an effort to inspire us all. Even at this age, he's inspiring us all, which is an absolutely brilliant. So let's have a round, round of applause. I still have a few things to say, but once again, as we are prepared to be awed by Cyrus's performance, to invite on stage Professor Mohamed Yunus stage and Cyrus as well to first start off, which we say is a Nana Nati chat. That's right. Now let's give a warm welcome to Cyrus Yunus McReynolds as he takes the stage to inspire us. A very round of applause, please. Champion is here. Good. Good afternoon, everyone. I am Cyrus Yunus McReynolds, and I am eight and a half years old. Um, Prometheus pretty much said all I had to say, so. <laughs> Very I mean, good. And where is your mom? Yeah, that kid. Okay. And what is the Taekwondo? Do you explain to us? Taekwondo, taekwondo me is actually three different words. Tai means hand, Guan means foot, and Do means art. <clears throat> How did you get interested in it? Um, well, I, I don't know. I mean, I just... How, how, how Tell us back? when you started. How many years back? I mean... I've been doing it for four and a half years. Four and a half years. He's doing it for four and a half years. Very yeah. good. You're already a champion, right? Did you get any medal for that? I mean, I am a district champion. A district champion. See? Seven states. You're talking Seven. to a real champ. And are you going to show us how you do that? Yes. Yes. Shall can you tell us? Can you tell us about your form? Which form you're doing and what it means? Yes. It Explain. is called Chung Jung Two. Chung Jung Tu means everything tur turns out perfect and beautiful. Very good. Thank you. So, are you ready to show us a little bit? I guess. How it is done? I guess. Okay. <laughs> Can I hold it? Okay. Okay. Ready? Chia? Kin Ye? Chambi? Your form begin. Thank you very much, Cyrus. Ladies and gentlemen, let's keep the applause going. And while he does it, can I please also request uh, Dina Yunus on stage just to do a quick uh, capture this moment photos. Can I please ask Monica and Cyrus to stay on stage? Dina, please join them. We want to capture this moment.
One second, ladies and gentlemen, please give them a round round of applause. Here we go. We've got a champion amongst us. Thank you. Thank you very much. Breakout session slides. Breakout session slides. All right, ladies and gentlemen, we now transition into our highly interactive breakout sessions. Time to take a deep dive in these sessions will roughly run for about an hour. And then that will be followed by a networking session, effectively refreshments and tea. We hope here, following the plenary, the breakout sessions, grab your refreshments, tea. We want to be back here by 5 p.m., please. And we're now going to pit up, put up the names of all the breakout sessions. I'll take you through them right now. The first breakout session is going to be held in Senang Hall 3. And the session is titled, Unleashing the Power of Entrepreneurs to Overcome Employment. Breakout session one is Unleashing the Power of Entrepreneurs to Overcome Unemployment. That's going to be held in Senang Hall 3. Second breakout session, dive into social business, innovation, new economics for a sustainable future. That's Senang Hall 4. The third breakout session is Replication of Nobin and Microcredit for New Economics. That's in Dewang Senang, the fourth breakout session is titled Empowering Social Business Renewable Energy, which is happening in Pelangi Hall 1. The fifth breakout session is Nurturing Value Based Social Business Leadership in the Landscape of AI. That's happening in Pelangi Hall 2. The sixth breakout session is Empowering Inclusive Growth. Social business at the bottom of the pyramid, that, that's Senang Hall 5. The seventh breakout session is recycling.